Hey guys, it's Marina with Artworthy Life where I teach Christ-centered art journaling that gets you into God's word every day. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to paint a super easy watercolor feather from start to finish. So I hope you will stick around and see the whole thing. If that sounds super fun to you, please give this video a like. And if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and share it with someone that you think would enjoy learning how to paint some water watercolor feathers. So this is gonna be really fun, but what I love to do is to start off with some scripture to get you started on the right foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, read you a scripture that inspired today's art journaling. Hi, Valerie, thanks so much for jumping on. So today we're gonna be reading from Psalm chapter, or Psalm 17, verse eight. And it's a super short verse, all it says is, Keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. And of course, that's talking about God and his uh, provision and protection. And it's just wonderful, that, that idea of comfort, being in the shadow of your wings. I just think that's such a cool, beautiful, poetic um, way to describe God's love for us. Really beautiful. All right. So because of that verse um, and this, the theme inside the Artworthy Journal Club this month was, was, the resurrection. And uh, as I mentioned before, the resurrection always reminds me also of Jesus's baptism, which is that um, picture of death, burial, and resurrection. And so, of course, that reminds me of the dove as well. So we've had doves incorporated into our art journaling this month inside the club. So it's been really fun. And I thought, let's just keep rolling with it and have some beautiful feathers. I always love to paint feathers. You guys always love to see them. So... If that sounds like something you're gonna enjoy, please leave in the comments what color of feather you would like to see because I will do my best to incorporate that color into today's feathers. So drop me in the comments your either your favorite color or just one that you want to see in the feathers today. Let me see if I'm seeing people jump on. Hey Pam, so glad to see you on. Hi Bonnie, thanks for watching. Alrighty, so we just finished the border of this art journal on my private or my public group, um, which is called uh, Art Journaling DIY. If you're not already a part of that Facebook group, go ahead and join it. It's free and we just do some extra little fun things every week and I have a 15 minute Friday. So that's really fun. Um, so during that, we just did the border of this two page spread using chalk pastels. That's another one of my favorite things to use alongside watercolors. They blend really easily. They look cohesive with watercolors. They have that soft, gorgeous look. So that's how we accomplish this border. If you wanna see that, just go join that group. It's free to join. And um, all of the replays are still available. Any of the videos I've done, the replays are available on that page. So you can go back and, and watch that, it's super fun. Uh, okay, hey, Aunt Emmy, thanks for jumping on. She says emerald green. All right, and Bonnie said purple. Great combos. We definitely can incorporate those. Hi, Leslie Ann. Good morning. Good morning. So as you're jumping on, once again, please leave in the comments what color of feather you would like to see. And I'm just going to make sure I can see all the comments coming through. Um, let's see. Okay. All righty. So let's go ahead and get started. This, um, there are so many ways to paint feathers in watercolors. You can make them more realistic. You can make them more um, involved, more complicated, whatever, however you want to say that. But um, I like to keep them simple so that you guys can just pick up a brush and, and, um, and go for it. So what I'm going to start with is a um, pencil, actually. And we'll start off by drawing out the feather first. So let me grab my pencil here. And what you'll want to do is um, when you draw outlines before you start watercoloring, you want to keep your outlines nice and soft. Um, you don't want really harsh pencil lines. So if you do use a pencil, just keep your pencil lines really light so that you can erase any of them that are too harsh. So I like to sharpen my pencil really, really well. And um, you guys Several of you have said colors. Let's see. Let's see if I see any other colors. Hey, Lori. She says pink, midnight blue, and pink combo. Oh, she's throwing me a curveball. She wants me to combine those two colors. I think that's a great combo. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. And Bonnie says purple. Okay. So, oh, Valerie says blue. The colors you guys are saying work really, really well with 
a peacock feather. So I think I'm going to start with a peacock feather and we'll come to Lori's pink and midnight blue in just a minute. Alrighty, so what I'm going to start with is just drawing the feather shape first. So I'm going to do, let me just make sure you guys can see where I'm at. Okay, good. Um, so we're going to start with the shaft of the feather. And to draw that, I'm just going to keep it nice and loose. And I'm going to do a long S shape. So just kind of a long squiggly line. And I always say kind of an S shape, but if you can imagine an S that's, you grab both ends of it and you kind of stretched it out. That's what I mean by a long S shape. So something with two curves going on. And I'm gonna draw the center of the feather. And what I've done is I've just real quickly um, pulled up a peacock feather so that I can see where the colors are incorporated. And it looks like there's gonna be kind of a teardrop shape and then another color on the inside. And then inside of that, there's like the eye of the feather. So I'm just gonna quickly give myself a little outline of that. That's all we need for the basis of this. And now I'm gonna start with my kitty. My kitty mascot is at the door. I don't know if you guys can hear her, but she is, she knows that I'm talking and she thinks I'm talking to her. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start with the lighter colors. So I like to work light to dark when we're doing watercolors. And we'll start with a golden color. I know nobody said that color, but it's a color that's in the feather of a peacock. So I'm gonna start with a golden yellow. I'm using my Como Rebbe watercolor set by Mozart and I'll just name off the colors as I go but if you don't have these colors use whatever you have so this is just a bright yellow and it's called brilliant yellow number three and I'm going to water it down and the brush I'm using is is um, Princeton velvet touch number 10 long round it just has a really nice fine tip so I can use it it's very versatile okay so what I'm going to do is start with um, let me make sure you guys can see this. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, let me move this over a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna start with the yellow and then pull out some of the greens and other colors from the center of the feather. So I'm gonna start with this golden color. Just come around all the way around here with that. And I'm gonna keep this feather fairly simple. I don't want it to be super, super detailed. So I'm just gonna kind of fill it in loosely and then take my, take my brush and add, I'm gonna add in my green to the yellow that I already have. And the green that I'm gonna use is peak green. To start with, I'm gonna just use a light peak green. And I'm gonna use the very tip of this brush. You can either use this kind of brush or a liner brush. And if this ends up not being thin enough, I will switch to my liner brush. But I'm gonna start from the yellow that I just added and do some quick S shape lines out from the center of this feather. And I'm just gonna start kind of coming around with these um, little feathery lines coming out. And I'm gonna space them out a little bit because we'll be adding some more as we go. And I just wanna give them somewhere to start. Okay, and now we're gonna start coming down and I'm gonna water my brush down just a little bit. And I think I am gonna switch to my smaller brush now just so that I don't end up with really thick lines. I want my lines to be nice and thin. So we're gonna start off here. So now I can get those nice, really thin lines coming up the edges. And I'm just gonna keep working my way down, doing these wide S shapes all the way down. And I'm keeping them spaced out because I'm gonna come in with more darker colors in just a minute. So now as the feather curves, I'm gonna let some of my my little feather um, <laughs> hairs, or I don't know what you call these, the smaller bits of the feather, uh, cross over each other. I noticed in photos of feathers that some of those cross over each other and it makes the feather look more 
carefree and also more realistic when not all the little edges are perfectly in alignment. So I'm gonna just do that. Go ahead and let those kind of cross over. Okay, so now that's gonna start drying. And as that's drying, I'm gonna just keep adding more color. So what, what I want you to notice is this green is bleeding into the yellow and that's not necessarily realistic, but it looks really cool in watercolor and I like the way it looks. So I'm gonna let them kind of bleed into each other. I'm also gonna, gonna go back to the yellow kind of that golden yellow that I had originally, which is what I used on the center of this feather. And I'm gonna add some of those yellow feathery things into this, this um, the edges of the feather as well. So I'm just gonna take that yellow and I want it to be a little darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, this is yellow ochre I'm adding to it because it's not quite showing up. So I'm gonna add a darker yellow and just do that because that just gives more colors going on. I think that's really fun to have different colors. And this is not thick enough, so I need to get more pigment on my brush. I have too much water, so I'm adding more pigment to my brush. And that will give me more, more to sweep along the page. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this golden color and keep going around the feather, coming down the feather, do some down here. And again, I'm letting them cross over each other, kind of stretching them out like that. Okay, and one thing I wanna avoid, which a couple of my brush strokes have done, but I'm trying to avoid it, is letting the brush drag along the page. So I don't want to run out of pigment. Um, I don't want to run out of liquid on my paintbrush. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm keeping my brush nice and wet. And that's going to let all of my brush strokes stay nice and smooth. All right. So now I'm going to come in with my darker colors. And this is going to, I'm going to start off with a blue. Um, who said blue? Who was it that said blue earlier? Um, say me if it was you. Hey, mom. <laughs> uh, let's see. It was Valerie who said blue. Okay, Valerie, we're going to do one better than that. We're going to do two different kinds of blue. <laughs> and I know Leslie Ann likes blue too. So hopefully we'll satisfy both of you with the kinds of blues we'll be using. It was Valerie. Okay, good, good. All right. So um, I'm going to start off with a light teal blue and I'm going to use this palette has neon blues and I really like them because they're nice and clear. So I'm gonna use a neon blue mixed with um, azurite blue. And the two of those together with a little water added to them should create a nice clear turquoise color we can use. So I'm gonna add some water to my palette. I'm wanting to get a little bit more green in my blue, so I'm going to just add a touch of peak green to make that color more teal. And add some water. All right. Notice I have my really fancy, fancy uh, palette going on here. <laughs> this is my portable palette because I don't have my nice, nice one right now, but as you can see, works just as fine, just as fine, just as good, whatever. Um, and you don't, you definitely don't need anything fancy. Okay. So we're going to use this light blue on the inner circle here. Just go around that inner circle and it has like this little notch out of it in the reference photo I'm looking at. So I'm just going to let that blue just kind of bleed out and then come in with a wet brush and use some of that color in the rest of the feather. So we're going to do some blue up and down this feather right here. I'm gonna do some light ones that are really just wispy little lines. I'm gonna let some come down here at the very bottom. And I'm just looking for gaps where I can stick some more feathers in there, some more little edges. And if you don't wanna go over the border of your, um, 
if you had a border like this and you didn't want to go over it, you could tape over it or put some paper down so you don't, but I don't really care if mine crosses over, so I'm going to let it do it. I'm going to start adding this, the uh, shaft or whatever of this feather using just the tip of my paintbrush and just bringing some of that blue down. Now I'm going to come up around the peacock feather here and start adding some of this blue at the very top. So you can see I'm just kind of spacing it all the way down. And obviously a real peacock feather may not have all these colors right where I'm putting them, but um, feel free to do it however it makes you happy. And if you don't want to make it, if you want to make it look more realistic, just grab a reference photo and look and see where the colors land. I'm just getting kind of the idea down there. All right, now I'm going to grab some darker blue and a little bit of purple to make my blue nice and dark. So I'm going to start with this blue that I already have, add a little bit more of the neon blue, mostly just to get it more pigmented. I'm not really going any darker or changing the color. I'm just getting it more pigmented. And then I'm going to take my brush and paint that onto the inside of this feather right here, the very center. So this will be the center of the feather and also the darkest colors are going to be right here. Okay, and I'm going to add in some dark purple and that is just number 34 violet. I'm going to add that in to make a deep, deep blue purple. Okay, and I'm going to use a combination of those colors to bring in the darkest colors around this feather. So I'm going to do some real thin feather lines going up and around the eye of the feather. And I'm actually just using this blue to almost border it as well. So I'm kind of coming up along the side and then bringing the edges out. So almost just kind of using it to sweep along the edge of this. Okay, and then I'm gonna take that color and just go down the rest of the feather mostly close to the center. Like I'm not worried about going way far out with this. And I'm gonna overlap most of the colors that I already have. Now another key that would help a lot is if I was turning my, my book. I'm not turning it right now because I want you guys to be able to see the direction I'm going. But if I turned my book, it would help a lot. It would just give me more brush control and it would help with my brush strokes a lot. So I'll just come all the way down. And I'm watching again for that brush to get dry. When my brush gets dry, I, I, I know that my brush strokes are not gonna look as good. That one's a little wobbly, that's okay. I'll just keep going. Um, and then it also will make the paint kind of drag along, so we don't want that either. All right, so I'm gonna keep going all the way down, do some real dark ones down at the bottom. Just some quick ones. And then I like for the bottom ones to kind of curl back on themselves. If you look at a regular feather photo, there's usually some little wispies that kind of come back on themselves down here. So that's what I'm gonna paint right there. Just a few. And they can be simple like that. So not super complicated. Um, I am working with chalk pastels here. So I have chalk on my arm now from painting that edge. So I'm gonna wipe my arm off. <laughs> and one of the things I love about watercolors in contrast to chalk pastels is you don't have that problem of smearing the chalks across the page. You can use, um, we've done some research over the past uh, years, some different lives that I did. I know some different people did some research and I think there's sprays that you can 
like a spray paint type of thing that you can spray on your page if you're using chalk pastels um, that will keep them in place. So you ladies that are artists already, you can maybe leave in the comments what we've found, but um, I find that after they've sat for a while, they don't smear as much anyway, so it might not be so much of a problem. Um, but if you're interested in that, just kind of Google like what kind of things that you could use. And I know that there's been a couple people who've tried like clear coat artist paints, like spray paint type paints, and that'll hold them in place. But what I'm doing right now is just erasing where my arm smudged a little bit to brighten that white all the way up again. All right, so there's that feather ready to go. Um, I'll pro I could probably add a little bit of detail, like lines maybe to the yellow or whatever, but for now, I think it looks great and it can just stay that way. Um, Valerie says she just uses hairspray. I have heard of that before and I have never done it, but I've heard that people have done it. So if it works, more power to you. Leslie Ann also said blue, but only her name shows. Oh, how weird. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, Leslie Ann also says that she found a spray sealer at Hobby Lobby, but hasn't used it yet. Okay. So if you do use it, let us know how it works. And Bonnie, yes, I'm in Tennessee. <laughs> I am in Tennessee, um, in the Lexington area at Lexington. Yes. Oh yes. That's where I am. <laughs> I hardly, I hardly even know what town I'm in. <laughs> Mom says hot pink. Okay. So we had a vote for pink and midnight blue. So I think we should try that over here. Um, so I'm just going to take my pencil again, give myself a good outline of a feather that I can do on this side. And we'll just kind of do an S shape coming down. And this feather is going to be facing downward, like the top of it's going to be on the right edge. Um, <coughs> yeah, okay. So we're going to do a feather just coming down from this. And I'm just going to start with a kind of a V shape on the feather and bring this all the way to a point up here. So I'm just kind of following that S shape parallel to it and then bringing it around. I'm gonna make it a little shorter than that because I don't want it to run into the edge. All right. So what's cool is we do have some pinks and midnight blues in this painting in the border already. So I will definitely be able to incorporate that. Let me do some little V's cutting out, cutting out of the edge of this feather. So all I'm doing is basically um, going back with the angle of the feather, putting some little breaks in the plumules or whatever you call those. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you call those. Last time we did feathers, I said this on Monday, but last time we did feathers, I found, I had the I had the problem of not having any vocabulary for describing what part of the feather I'm painting at any given time. And I said next time I paint feathers, I need to look up the vocabulary before I paint them and I didn't. <laughs> Just a glutton for punishment. All right, so um, what we're going to do is start with <clears throat> the midnight blue. Or you know what? We'll mix up both of the colors because this is a really interesting color combination. So I'm glad that you guys came up with that. So this is for um, mom's hot pink color request and also Lori's blue and pink color request. Let's see. Did I miss anyone else's colors? that I haven't used yet. I've got emerald green and purple. I guess I didn't technically use purple. We'll use purple right now um, in this one as we go. Valerie said blues. Okay, if I did not do your color already, drop it again in the comments and hopefully I'll get it before we're done. All right, so I'm gonna mix up the blue first. So this I'm gonna start with, um, I'm gonna start with the azurite blue. And I'm gonna add in some violet to make it nice and deep. So this is the blue that I'm coming up with. It's like a really deep royal blue. And I'm also gonna add neon blue to it. It has this really cool clear color. So I'm just gonna use a real deep blue. We'll try to give it that nice blue color. And then 
Let me see if I can get away with a hot pink. Let me clean off this side of my palette, make room for hot pink. So my palette has no true pink. Um, it has like reds that you can make into pinks, but they always end up with kind of that rosy color. So I'm gonna use the hot pink and then add some red in to try to give it that bright flamingo pink if I can. Okay, so we're gonna start with neon pink, number 75 in this palette. It's a very bright pink. I should show you guys what it looks like in the palette. Oops. Here's what it looks like in its little cake. So see how bright that is? So it, it's very bright, but when it goes onto the page, sometimes it's not as bright as it shows here. Might, I might try it just like this and see how it goes. It's nice and clear, clean color. color. Clear, clean, wow, that's hard to say three times. Clear, clean color. <laughs> Ooh. All righty, let's start with pink. All right, so what I wanna do is a wet and wet technique. I should, I should start with just water. I'm gonna start with just water and I'm gonna fill in this pink feather. It's gonna start off pink. All the way to the tip of it with just a light coat of light pink. I'm gonna to try to work quickly because I don't want this to get dry too fast. I'm gonna leave some white space behind. Okay, so there's the color down on the page. I'm gonna start with the bright pink at the tip and just kind of bring that color back. I'm gonna to try to use brush strokes to create the feathery edges. Leave a little bit of white space near the shaft of the feather. But I'm gonna just let that color kind of bleed out and then bring it all the way back. So I've got this really bright pink going on. And now I'm gonna come in with the blue. So blue at the very tip here. And I'm just gonna sweep it Still leaving a little bit of white space. I'm just gonna sweep it into the rest. I want it to be even deeper though. It's not quite as deep as I want it to be. It's a little bit too blah. I'm gonna get a little bit more blue. All right, that's what I'm wanting, that richer blue right there. Of course, it's gonna transition to pink, so it's gonna have a purple tint to it as it comes down. I'm just gonna kinda of keep working it all the way out. I'm gonna try not to let too much of the purple go up to the tip because I wanna leave that hot pink really bright. Now I'm just smoothing out my edges a little. We'll let some of that color bleed into itself like that. And I'm gonna take a little bit more of the purple and blue and drop that in right there. The very bottom and I'm gonna use that also to create the shaft of the feather going all the way up. Might just kind of use it on the edges as well. As it dries, these lines aren't gonna show up very much, but the dark color will shine through, which is important. So just kind of bringing that color out while it's still wet so that it doesn't have some crazy brush strokes in it. And that's pretty good. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do some real light brush strokes here. But it doesn't need a whole lot, so that's probably good. And I'm just gonna use the tip of this brush to finish the end of it right here. 
like that. And there's our blue and pink feather. That was fun. <laughs> I like that one. Mom says pretty, pretty. Oh, Bonnie, thank you so much. She says it's pretty too. Okay, any other color votes while we're on? Um, I think, I think that got everybody's. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a scripture, the scripture verse we had from today to this page, but this is all I have for you guys live. Let me go ahead and show you, um, show it, well, let's see, can I do this way? Ooh, I'm not sure if it'll do that. Aha, it will do it like, okay, well, whatever. I was gonna try to make it bigger for you guys. Technology. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for voting on colors. This is really fun. We got two very different kinds of feathers. So I hope you enjoyed that. And once again, if you did, please give the video a thumbs up and share it with someone that you think would enjoy it. Tag a friend or a family member or an enemy. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for watching and, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. I'll be back in Oregon, so we will have something different planned for you next week. So join me again. I'm live every Friday at 10 30 AM Pacific time, 1230 central, 130 Eastern right here on art really life. And I hope you guys all have a really blessed Friday and a happy, happy week weekend. Alrighty. God bless you guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.